Marco wanted me to film a video on low libido, which is exactly what I did about three hours ago, until I realized that my own creative libido was all over the place. I was being way too aggressive, I was being boring in my arguments, and I needed to go to the gym, so here we are now, after a few heavy farmer walks and a lovely walk back in the rain, to talk about passion, perversion, and instinctual desire, which as far as I can tell from preparing for this question and answer series, feel free to get involved, is the best summary of the tantric transcendental approach to libido, the best of the Jungian alchemical approach to libido. We can't forget the crass classic, not the classic, maybe it's classic. If you don't like Sigmund Freud, he might be a bit crass and a bit unpalatable, but classic libido theory. And then some of the more creatively direct transpersonal theories, hopefully you can see that, of someone like Gene Houston, which is literally a work on how to be more creative. Passion, perversion, and instinctual desire. It's not actually the full answer. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a two-step process to going from low libido to high libido, or if you're at high libido, bringing you back from that unstable manic edge where you're unreliable with your creativity and you can't consistently output in the way that you know you are capable of doing because this is my main concern with making an episode like this. I'm not just speaking to one person and one type of creative. Creativity is a word that we use as a short form encapsulation of a wide variety of energetic phenomena. And I mean this psychically, emotionally, spiritually, and sexually. Low libido is a phrase that when I was doing my YouTube research about how to frame this video, is primarily linked to reproductive challenges. And that's not the video I want to make because I haven't suffered that myself. I don't help people do that in private work, but I do support people in unlocking something like their creative self-actualization power. I do a lot of bunny ears in these episodes, I've just realized. Maybe I'll not do that so much, but the point that I'm trying to make, creative libido is a very complex topic and I don't know how useful it is for me to go through each of these books and bring out the quotes that I thought I was going to bring out in regards to you actually taking something from this video, which will hopefully be useful. The two-step process of maximizing your libido is incredibly simple. I can define libido in a word, it's energy. That's it, that's as simple as it possibly gets. It's vital life force energy. Stage number one, unblock your energy, tear down that dam, release the traumas that are getting in the way of being the creative embodied person that you know you're meant to be. And stage number two, once the floodwaters are released into the world, you better bloody make sure that you have chosen the right lane of expression. It doesn't have to be just one, one primary lane in terms of creative career, sure, but in terms of sexuality and in terms of spirituality, make sure you've chosen the right lanes. It doesn't mean that you can't switch religions or switch the faith and the actual structure at the higher levels, but make sure that you've got a practice which is reliable and the same with creativity itself. Commit to a medium, commit to a certain form of art, a certain career, a certain entrepreneurial creative venture, and let that water carry you forwards. The water being the energy of the creative libido itself. But let's bring it all back into something which is practical and hopefully very condensed because I do not want to go into the depths of the creative libido psychic theory because I simply do not think that it's very useful for you watching this video. Really, you've got two things that you can focus on. Is there unhealed trauma which is getting, getting in the way of your feeling of vitality? Do you have a feeling that you wake up and exist in days which are generally quite sluggish, in which case it might be trauma, but realistically it's also a lot to do with your diet and your fitness and the relationships that you have with people around you. The reason that I went to the gym and I'm re-recording this video is that my creative libido, when I first tried to make this episode, was so juvenile and unnecessarily harsh. I was swearing way too much. I was getting really aggressive with my statements about needing to just focus on the work and see it comes through a little bit there. But I can ground it down and I can create a healthy sense of exertion without being 
overly exertive because on a good day and when I'm centered, I've done my prerequisite trauma work to not need the world around me or yourself to change in accordance with my internal image of my creative golden shadow, which is a very complex way of saying, I don't need you to be more like me for me to be okay. When I first tried to film this video, I was way too much in that energy. So now I can bring myself back, literally bring back, here's a bit of bioenergetics in action where you change your posture and not so forwards and invite you to do the trauma work and invite you in very simple, minimal sentences to focus on your fitness, a sport that you enjoy, a gym routine that you love, a way of moving and being in your body and expressing through your body is the ultimate foundation for going from low libido to medium libido and high libido. There are a few complications and complexities that I'm going to come into. What happens when we get unstable in a high libido state? Well, that's uh, something which a lot of creatives will fall victim to. This is the genius madness, blurry line kind of territory. When it comes to fitness, the reason that I emphasize the grounding importance of having a consistent fitness routine is that your body is an instrument for creativity. I do not believe that it's good advice to go towards the drink, drug, and stimulant pathway as I've covered in previous videos uh, on this channel because that is not something which will allow you to express. Let's get spiritual, let's make it powerful. If your soul's voice has a certain signature of creativity, would you much rather have the opportunity to sing that song over four decades or ten decades? Imagine being creative at age 100. That's a much more inspiring idea for me personally, especially if your creativity is linked to something around intellectual and emotional output. If you're a dancer, it might be difficult. But if you're a poet, a speaker, an artist of certain forms where you're in control of your motor function unless you get dementia or Alzheimer's in your 90s, you can paint and you can create and you can bring beauty into the world well into your final days on this earth. And I truly believe that's possible. But for that to even come about, you need to look after your instrument. Not only will you not receive that creative, muse-like inspiration from the heavens clearly, you won't be able to express it with any degree of consistent, authentic, powerful, reliable force into the world. If you're weak and rusty, if you're significantly underweight, significantly overweight, or anywhere in between, I think I said underweight and overweight, if you're fucked up in one way or another and you're fucking yourself up with substances, getting a bit aggressive again, but I just think it's a waste of life. It's really a waste of life. If you want to honor that creative potential that you have, honor your body first. This is the single most creative tool that you will ever be gifted the privilege to be a part of. That's stage one. Trauma work, fitness, diet, lifestyle, and of course, there's many complexities about the types of relationships we keep and the environment that we're in that I can't go into in just a short video, but you get the drift. And if you want help with trauma work in particular, I've got at least 30 or 40 videos on this channel. I'll link a playlist in the description. You can check them out. Just search it. There's so many resources. I hold up a book in all of my inner work central series. Let's move on to the second part of this process. So now we've unblocked and we've unlocked some of this creative power. What typically happens with the creative individual is that they will get manic and inflated. If they weren't like this from childhood, they will get to a moment in their 20s or their 30s or maybe their 40s where suddenly everything is about the esoteric, mystical, self-actualizing impulse. And I'm sure you know someone like this, or maybe you've been there yourself. This is the person who shows up in any room that they're in and can't help but bring through their esoteric wisdom as if they were the Nikola Tesla of the 21st century, just waiting to be discovered by the world. Their poetry, their art, their brilliant mind, one day, one day, when the world is ready, they will be seen and they will be appreciated for who they actually are. It's a load of shit. It's a false, manic, egoically inflated identity. I've done it myself. I'm speaking to myself, but it is a load of shit. If you haven't got the action, if you haven't made the work, if you're not making the work, people won't respond to you as who you think you are because you've got a creative, egoic identity which forms like a pumpkin on a stick 
It's Halloween when I'm recording this, that's why a pumpkin came through. A melon on a stick would also do, but let's go with pumpkin. You've got a spooky, scary, pumpkin on a stick kind of personality, and you think that you're really going to be the next creative genius that changes the way that the world believes in whatever you're trying to bring out. Don't fall into that trap. The manic inflated libido state will either express verbally and intellectually in these ideas, it will come out as fits and starts, these sporadic, jagged attempts at creating art. You know someone like this as well. I'm also this person at times. Well, not so much these days, but I remember when I first started writing poetry and I would get hit by the inspiration, the moment would come, the train would go past and I need to catch the ride, otherwise it's gone. I wouldn't write very much. I didn't have a creative discipline. I might write one good poem and I thought it was one good poem. But the reality is, if I look back at some of those early pieces, they're not sophisticated at all because they haven't got the grounding to actually work with language in a way which has maturity and multi-level nuance. I'm caught up in the sensation. I'm bubbling. I'm going to get the energy up. It's this kind of energy of just bubbling and full of enthusiasm, floating in the clouds, no roots to the earth, and you can't do it the next day and the next day and for a month and a year. And 10 years in a row. It usually indicates that there's still some trauma which is yet to be healed. It usually indicates that you haven't cleared up your body with fitness and health. But when it gets into that really developed psychic territory and you've done all those things, you're already sober, you're already healthy, but you're still suffering from that creative, over-exaggerated position, it's usually the case of not having defined your lane of expression. This is applied presence. The title of this video talks about passion, perversion, and instinctual desire. All three of those, when they're coalesced at their highest level of expression, is presence. But not just human being, we're talking human being and human doing. Don't fall into the spiritual bypass kind of trap, where suddenly it's all about being and it's not about doing, because doing would be a lower earthly way of engaging and you just live into the fantasy state, which borders on schizophrenic, par paranoid, borderline territory. Being and doing, presence, apply it. Apply the presence of mind and apply the presence of the heart to be able to express powerfully into the world in a defined medium. If you've undammed your creative potential and you haven't laid out a few trenches, you haven't got your shovel and dug out the form of, okay, I'm going to make a short story collection. And I'm going to really commit to this for the next two years. And you prove that to yourself by writing for 90 minutes every day, six days a week perhaps, give yourself a day off. If you can't get to the three month mark, it's probably not for you. There's probably maybe some trauma to unblock and that's okay, we can go back and unblock that. But one of the great tragedies of not defining the lane or actually even worse, having defined the lane and find that there's the water's coming out, that creative energy's coming out and then you hit a block, you hit a branch that's fallen over, or maybe a large boulder or some kind of sludgy, swampy energy. If you get precious about your creativity and you don't move through that resistance, which is a very classic uh, war of art kind of idea. I think I've got it down here, actually. I do have it down here. Stephen Pressfield, War of Art, classic uh, kind of 2015 read. I recommend it. It's a really short read. It's quite masculine, but go for that. That's talking about resistance, and resistance is ultimately the resistance of becoming a professional. And if you want to be a creative professional, you define the lane and you move through it for multiple decades. This also means sexuality and spirituality having defined lanes which aim towards something like your highest expression within each lane. I'll go with myself as an example because it'll be easier to speak to this. Right now, I'm, I think this is episode 13 in the series. I'm 13 of 500. I've defined a lane for the next five years of question and answer series, not because it's something which I want to try and boast about or brag about, although sometimes I do wonder if someone looks at that number on the title and thinks, who's this guy? He's going to give up at episode 7. Well, I haven't. Or episode 23. Well, I haven't. Or 112. I'm not going to. That's me defining my trench so that my energy can flow automatically in a way which becomes genuinely easy as you progress. I like having long lanes with big timelines and it's what I do with my library building as well and it's what I do with client work which is why I don't do short-term one-off sessions. 
I want distance to play with. And creative people need that, I think, at their very core. If you get caught up in just the one piece of art, if you get caught up in just the next video, and you don't have the clarity of mind to be able to predict or at least estimate where the next six months could go and how your creation might look as you refine your craft, you're going to get tempted by many different lanes that people present you in or put you in and present to you. Sexuality is a really dangerous trap in the same, well, the same vein, ultimately, because if you don't choose wisely who you're going to share that kind of experience with, if you're still consuming things like pornography on a daily basis, or perhaps even twice a day, which I highly recommend completely removing from your psychic real estate, if you're choosing partners that don't support that vision, and if you're not in a place where that is something which is a vital libido project that you're both working on together, you're both refining, which again is something more like these kinds of, you know, transcendental books. I'm not going to say the word, don't want to say it too often, I tend to get issues with YouTube if you say that word too often. That's the one lane of the three major lanes and the spirituality being the other lane. I don't need to describe spiritual mysticism to you because you're already probably quite well versed in that. And mysticism, of course, is an expression of psychic libido flowing in and flowing out and vitalizing your body from head to toe. Let's wrap it all back up together. Creative libido. How do we maximize while also minimizing the capacity for overflow or misdirection or stop and start kind of creativity? Do your trauma work and be aware that trauma work will come back in a spiral over the years, inner work itself will take many years if you're doing it in earnest. Don't believe anyone that tells you you can do it in a few months. It is complete nonsense. You need full spectrum inner work that takes into account the many complexities and many layers of consciousness. You can study people like Ken Wilber, an integral theory or more approachable spiral dynamics, or something like David Hawkins' level of consciousness. You've probably heard of all three of them. We need expressions and healing at every level, parts work, archetypal work, different ways of working via psychic multiplicity. All of this takes many years to move through our, on that spiral of healing, but don't spend too much time doing that before also doing the laying, before also pouring into your de definite long-term expression, whatever that might be. You can do it as you progress because ultimately it's the equivalent of moving the branch out of that blocked stream or finding a way to shunt that boulder over your shoulder. I think I've said that many times in this series. Boulder over the shoulder. I just love the archetypal imagery. Nothing like an atlas stone on the shoulder and it's a creative act. If you uh, go deep enough into weightlifting, there's a real creativity there. So don't forget the body. See, my libido, not quite as refined as I'd want it to be, but ultimately, hopefully grounded enough to communicate this message and give you a feeling of hope but also a genuine reality check that if you're going in one direction too strongly or the other direction too strongly, either a positive inflation or a negative inflation, you're thinking too greatly of yourself or thinking too poorly of yourself, it could, it could be a libido issue. And if you do have those libido issues, just consider withdrawing it from unhealthy areas of expression, which could be addicted spirituality, addicted sexuality, or immature creativity usually a mixture of the three. It's not an easy topic, which is why I try to turn to these many books. You can read all of them if you want to. I'll give you bits and pieces here and there. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to leave it there. And we're going to go straight into the next one if you want to click on it on the screen, where we're talking about psychosynthesis, the higher and lower unconscious, where it's time to get deeply into self-integrative territory. Over there, and I'll see you over there.